Hope, Political Renewal in Romania. On December 22nd, Klaus Johannes takes office. The president-elect of Romania surprised many when he emerged victorious after polls in November. He says one of his biggest priorities is tackling corruption. Johannes belongs to Romania's German-speaking minority. That may be an advantage as he seeks to carry out his agenda. In the interview, Romania's president-elect, Klaus Johannes. Your election to the office of president was a big surprise for many. After the first round, your opponent, incumbent Prime Minister and Socialist Viktor Ponta, had a 10 percentage point lead. Yet you were always confident you would win. Why? I was convinced from the beginning that I could win and that I would win. Because at the beginning of the year, I was already traveling around a lot campaigning for the European parliamentary elections. I came into contact with a huge amount of people all the time. And I noticed that something needed to happen. People were simply waiting for change, waiting for something new. That certainly encouraged me to enter the race for president. And from the very start, it made me sure that I had a very good chance. There certainly was a chance. In the runoff poll, you won by nine percentage points, which surprised your opponent. What was the reaction from his Social Democratic Party after your victory? Admittedly, it was very surprising for a lot of people. Between the first and the second rounds of polling, few people believed that I could win. There was a big gap in the first round. My opponent led by 10%. People on my team were really quite worried. Personally, I was optimistic. The end result showed that my optimism was well grounded. My opponent and the opposing party simply weren't ready for the result. It took them completely by surprise. It knocked them off balance. Your campaign slogan was simple and clear. You called for a Romania of thoroughness and a Romania of work well done. I'm sure you have a list of priorities. Can you share some of them with us? Yes, that was my campaign slogan. Of course, it sounds very good in Romanian. When you translate it, it doesn't have the same impact. But the core message is something like this. Things should be done fairly and properly. But my campaign began with the question, why do you want to run? From the start, my answer was that I want Romania to have a different kind of politics. I want to change the way we do politics. That was the essence of my campaign. By a different kind of politics, I mean less show, less pointless talk, and more solutions. More solutions for Romania and for the people. Aside from that, I plan to be a different kind of president to the ones we've had in the past. I want to be a president who brings things together, who takes the things that should be closely aligned and brings them together again. Of course, I also want to be a fair but strict referee on the Romanian political landscape. As well as that, there are many, many things in Romania that must be improved, must be changed, must be done better. My election manifesto focused on 11 important topics. Those topics include education, health care, infrastructure, the pension system, and many other things. 
In my opinion, those things require more than just simple improvements. Some of them have to be rebuilt from the ground up. So let me name a concrete example, the area of schooling and the classroom. I'm convinced that what we have now is not what Romania needs. When we go into schools, it's clear that we need a dual schooling system, like there is in Germany. Because not every child wants to get a high school diploma after 12 years and then go to university. There are many who want to learn basic but good trades. At the moment, that's really not so easy to do. Regarding health care, at the moment, we place the patient somewhere on the margins of the system. The patient must be the focus of the system, so we can significantly improve health care. And I've proposed similar approaches for many other areas as well. Your past as a physics teacher and school inspector probably informed your opinions about education. During the campaign, one of the things that was used against you was that you're from the German-speaking minority. People tried to make that a millstone around your neck. Was it actually an advantage because the German-speaking minority in Romania is well respected? Yes, I think my opponent thought he could easily attack me with that. I don't think my belonging to the German minority was a disadvantage. But whether or not it was an advantage, and to what extent it helped, we'll have to wait and see. I want to stress two things on this topic of political attacks. During the campaign, I always talked about fighting corruption, and it turned out to be important. The attacks and counterattacks, of course, they always have something to do with that. Perhaps not from the very beginning, but from early in the campaign, the battle against corruption was at the center of my platform. And by coincidence, it matched up with what the Romanian anti-corruption authorities have been doing, especially in the last few weeks. It was very well received, and I think we should keep going with it. In terms of domestic policy, you scored points for that battle against corruption and for strengthening constitutional democracy and the rule of law. You also made a significant mark with foreign policy. On your first trip as president-elect, you travelled to the capital of Moldova, Chisinau, two days before their parliamentary elections. That was a strong statement. I simply wanted to show that I was interested in what was happening in the Republic of Moldova. Romania and Moldova have so much in common. History, language, culture, economics, that I felt I wanted to make that statement. And recently, Moldova has put itself on the path towards European integration. I found that very important, and I've stressed that again and again. Romania must and will support Moldova on that path. In my view, it's the right path for our brothers across the Prut, as we call them. I think that the result in the recent parliamentary elections show that the citizens of Moldova understand that the path towards Europe is better than the other path. It's an important statement also because of the crisis in Ukraine. Romania is a NATO and an EU member. How are you handling the crisis? Especially given the fact that in Moldova there are fears it could spread into the breakaway region of Transnistria. Of course, we hope that the crisis won't spread and that things will slowly start returning to normal. 
I think we're now in a geopolitical situation where Romania can't and isn't expected to act alone, but to act in partnership with others. Romania is in three such partnerships. They guarantee Romania's security in this extremely exposed region. And they provide us with a practical approach to solving the Ukraine crisis. Those partnerships I mentioned are, of course, first NATO, also the strategic partnership with the United States, and Romania's place within the EU. I think that in this situation, individual actions are not useful and not needed. It's better to approach problems together with our partners until such time that we can hopefully put this crisis behind us and all be part of a region where international agreements are adhered to. To finish, Mr. Johannes, let's return to the German-speaking minority in Romania. You're what's called a Transylvanian Saxon. How important is that for bilateral ties between Romania and Germany? I'm not sure if my belonging to the Transylvanian Saxon community is important or not. But the main thing is that I know a great deal of German politicians, some of them very well. As mayor of Hermannstadt, and a few years ago, as the chairman of the Democratic Forum of Germans in Romania, I nurtured contacts. I still have these contacts, and I want to use them for the good of Romania, to improve and deepen ties between Germany and Romania. Klaus Johannes, thank you.